continual short space. So it has to be dealing with empires of the earth. This thing is sitting on seven global empires. And the beast that was and is not even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goes into perdition. So he's the eighth beast that is actually a rebirthing of an empire that came out from the seventh. And he goes into perdition with his destruction. We're looking at a revived Roman Empire. We're looking at the return of a global monarch that the Bible calls Caesar in Jesus' day. The same Roman Empire that crucified Jesus must be judged by God. The same office of Caesar under which Jesus was crucified must be judged by God. He is going to allow Satan to reinstitute and reestablish Rome again on a global spectrum so he can drudge Rome for killing his boy. God is taking vengeance on the same empire that crucified Jesus. And you'll be a part of it if your soul is not expunged from the work of the harlot. She's operating in religion, appending people to the political spectrum, making the people drunk so they can't receive Jesus because their hope is where? In the here and now on, in this world. They don't see above the here and now and how we can manipulate the political spectrum to get our way. It's a trick of the devil. We got to get out of here. And the ten horns which thou sowest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet. It's the reordering of what I believe will be a ten a ten person, ten person governed economic setup globally. They'll divide the world into ten economic zones, each having a governor or an economic czar that controls that particular zone, reporting back to Caesar, who is a type of a Hitler, type of an all-dominating, all-controlling monarch governing the world with ten czars. I believe the strife you see on this world, in this world right now are different men striving to become one of the czars. I believe they're jockeying for a position to prove themselves faithful to the governing banking empire that you can trust me to be one of the czars. They know what's coming and I want one of the seats of power. Ten seats of power worldwide, I want one of them. I'll prove myself faithful to you by doing whatever you say politically to further your, your ideals and what you're trying to accomplish. Now give me one of the seats of power as my reward. So don't be mystified or amazed if you see Obama sit down in one of them or Bill Clinton or Hillary Clinton or uh, some prime minister of some foreign state, you know, Tony Blair, uh, people like that that are proving themselves faithful to these governing banking families so we can trust you to govern one of these economic zones. Look what it says. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. They give their power, their dunamis, and their strength, their exousia, unto the beast. I give my power and my authority to the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and king of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sowest, where the horse sits, are peoples, and multitudes and nations and tongues or different languages. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Just like Jesus has a body, a queen, a, mar a person he's married to that he rules with, his church. See how the beast is going to turn on the bride of the beast, destroy her, and rule alone. Why? Because he's totally selfish. 
I'm not sharing anything with anybody. I want total glorification of myself. And I don't need this whore no more. Because I got to where I was going. You watch how many young boys. They don't care nothing about a girl. Nothing. They hang with their dogs, their buddies, their running group, their partners. And they use the whores. That's the spirit that will come upon you as a whoremonger. You'll, you'll run around in a scatamite, little sissy clan of dudes you hang with. And you call yourself a player, putting down the girls and using them. And the young girls getting stripped down almost naked for a boy to pay attention to them, not realizing they don't want you. They don't even like girls. They hate you. They'll use you, but they don't want you. They, won't, they don't want to marry you or commit you just like their daddy the beast. Adam should have been a gardener, a nurturer of Eve. First thing he did when something went down, when he had fallen, threw her under the bus. The woman you gave me, she did it. You need to kill her. I'm concerned about me, not her. That's the spirit that rests on every man. That's got that stinking sodomite spirit in him. He will never protect the woman, never maintain her dignity and honor. He just wants to see you stripped down naked and make fun of you and see you as a nasty slut, a whore that he can use. Nobody's walking down the street holding a toilet in their hands. You use a toilet and you use the toilet where you, you leave the toilet where you found it. And that's what these young girls and these older women have now become. Used toilets that nobody wants. And they sit there mad, bitter, and angry because nobody wants me. But nobody wants a used toilet. Look at how much body waste has been dumped in you. Look at how much semen from other guys has been dumped in you. The stench of another man's stinking, filthy soul has marred you. Nobody wants you. Nobody wants anything used if you have an option to get something fresh. You don't want Shaquille O'Neal's tennis shoes if you can get a fresh pair yourself. With his sweaty feet all in the fibers of the tennis shoes and you smell them everywhere you go. You don't want anything used and old and worn and torn if you can get something brand new and fresh. Man, you don't want to marry some girl been with 35 guys you can get a virgin never been touched. And any guy tell you any different from that is a liar. A woman that has only been sealed off to just you and her whole life and you are the only one she's been with. Man, please. And the devil's telling you you need to be a whore and get as many men as you want. I tell you what's rest in front of you, nobody's going to want you because you're used, soiled goods. And it goes the same for a guy. A woman should want to burn out old stank whoremonger have been with a lot of women. Because who wants to use who wants to use anything or, 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 or even use a napkin or a Kleenex that's been used? You don't use, you don't use used toilet paper even. That's the standard of life. It's hated because so many people have lost everything by being a whore or a whoremonger. That's why you need to repent. Come to Jesus Christ and be washed clean from the defiling elements that have taken hold of you. That's the way out. For God had put in their hearts, the ten horns hearts, to fulfill his will and to, the, to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. And you know in, in chapter 18 it goes on to tell you about Babylon. The city of confusion. That's what it's all about. Nimrod and Samarim had started it eons ago. The Tower of Babel. Notice how the, the depiction of Nimrod and, and Samarim is always put forth as a woman holding a little baby with halos around their heads, worshiping the sun god, which is Satan. Roman Catholicism, you see the same woman, Mary, holding the little baby Jesus with halos, worshiping the sun god around their heads. It's nothing but the devil showing you that the woman 
has usurped authority, emaciated the man and made him to a little old bitty baby, and she's ruling for Satan. And he uses whores who bring death to a man. A woman that should have been a life giver to the man. A woman that should, should have been refreshing to the man. Almost like oxygen tanks on his, on, the, on his back as he's submerged into the ocean of life. He can draw some life support from the woman with encouragement, edification, cooking his meals, tending to the home, keeping the home clean, having the environment of the home. When he comes back from a day's work, he can find rest in his home. Solace in his home, peace in his home. Not a big mouth, loud mouth, blabbing fool, destroying everything, stomping around in six inch heels looking crazy with, with rope tied up or behind talking about a, a thong. That's what we've eroded away to. You can look at old movies back in the 40s and 50s and how those women dressed. Ladylike, demure. I don't know what they did in private. They dressed the part in the way in public. They were ladylike. Sundresses. Now everything's skin tight and peeled on, breast hanging everywhere, everybody half crazy. Not you you rather find a woman that even knows how to dress. No idea. Just stomp around looking like Nicki Minaj or some other perverted, freaked out image they've seen. And thinking that's the way it, that, that looks good and the men like it. A lust-filled, animalistic, whoremongering dog likes it, but not a man. That's all you appeal to and that's all you draw towards you when you walk around looking like that. Life givers that have become vessels and ambassadors of death. Proverbs evaluates it perfectly. Chambers leading down to death. Life givers is what God is looking for. Life givers is what he's searching the world for. Women who will be life givers again. Not contending, not castrating, not demeaning, not destroying, not a thick-headed moron with a horse forehead trying to know something when you know nothing. Seek out God and become a woman of God. The woman that he looked at when he had created Adam, pulled her out of his rib, set her to the side and made her Isha, a woman, to compliment the man, Adam. And he had everything and said it was good. Now this rebellion broke out by Genesis chapter 3. It's, it's going full forces. That serpentine seed slithers into the arena. We've got to return back to the biblical pattern by disassociation with the unclean, confessing what we are, to be purged from it, to be made whole and reestablish what God created in the first place. The signpost that sits on everybody's life to show forth that you have become that is the fornication in your life and the perverse activity. You can't get around what you did because what you did is a reflection of what you are. God is right. Anything I say contrary to what he says makes me wrong. Let God be true. Let every man be a liar. I need to be totally purged of this thing. Every football game on the sideline, they, they cover the sideline and naked girls call them cheerleaders. You know those girls aren't there to cheer. Those girls are there to appeal to the base carnal natures of the men in those stands. Cheerleaders. Good night. The girl got on a pair of shorts that ain't no bigger than, than a G-string. And that's it. Why she got to put that on? The chill. A silicone-enhanced army standing on the sidelines for the Falcons. For the base lust of the men. Everywhere you go, go to a mechanic shop, the, the calendars, naked women. Everywhere you go. They got a naked woman at the checkout stand on front of all the magazine covers, naked women. Every rap video, naked women. Every rock and roll video, naked women. Naked women, naked women, naked everywhere you go, naked women. Being used and pimped by the devil to make sure the men stay weak. See, it, the target are not the naked women. The target are the men to make sure they lust after them and stay weak. 
That's why you got to fight out, man. You got to fight like a dog to expunge the lust from your own soul. That's where the, that's where the problem is. It's not the naked women. It's the lust embedded in a man for the naked woman. It's got to be dealt with and put to death with everything else that's idamic. If not, instead of being able to associate and affiliate with a life giver, you'll seek out a chamber of death and that woman that's full of the devil himself will impart the very nature and essence of death to you and shut you down and God will have nothing to do with you. Tragedy has come upon the human race. Whores, dot in the landscape, let us know. The spirit of God is not around. Cause whores reign and rule. Jezebel was two things. She was a witch and she was a whore. And those whoredoms are reflecting what men have become and what men desire. They don't desire God. They want to worship whores. And the devil's accommodating us. Life givers is what we're after. We got to have life givers, women that have settled it in themselves. I'm not going to be the antithesis of Christ. I'm not going to stand against Christ. And I'm not going to be a part of a whole army of women designed to destroy men. I'm not going to do it. I won't bow to this thing. I'm going against the grain. I want to seek out being a life giver again. I've had the opportunity to be a chamber of death. I've victimized. I've already gone out there and seen the results of what I did. Give me life. Give me the opportunity, God, to reestablish myself as a life giver so I can help bring forth your children to fruition and see the body of Christ prosper. That should be the desire of every woman and the desire of every man should be to see women in that light. I respect young women and, and young girls I see even walking around trying to be harlots. I still uh, uh, will address them as a young lady respectfully and treat them like a lady. Although most of them can't even receive it. They have nothing, no, no paradigm to follow to know what that's like. But at least some man can show them some dignity and respect to give them the ability to see how they should be treated as opposed to how they've been used to, have become used to being treated. They're used to being treated like dogs, so therefore it's comfortable to them, to them now. Guys harken, spit in their faces, and they drag in the strip joints trying to meet no good lust-filled dogs at the strip joint now. The women go to the strip joints. They try to drag in there and find some old lust-filled animal worshiping some naked gal. That's how pitiful everything is. It's a pitiful situation, and only the church offers hope as we stand in Christ to preach this gospel of liberation. It's time for us to stand up and represent them again because God is searching for somebody to do it. Father, we thank you for this time and thank you for the word of God. We thank you, God, that you are really establishing yourself in us to make us, God, over again into your image that we can now go forth and propagate, reproduce. God, concentrate yourself in us that we can reach people. Change us, metamorphosize us. My mind, our minds collectively looking, hoping, searching to be totally purged of all this stuff from down here that we can be vessels of honor fit for you to use. This is God, we live in hell. We walk around in hell. We live amongst the pe people with unclean lips. We live in a perverse world, a stinking, nasty world. We won't make it to the corner before seeing something perverse and crazy. But God, in us, sanctify yourself in us. Make us over. We walk in the midst of this as lights and darkness, as salt to these people that are dying, God, on a God-forsaken wasteland. Lord, it's, it's critical. It's important. We need help. We cry out for help in Jesus' name. Help us, God. Lord, please have mercy on our souls and help us. That's my prayer. In your name, giving honor to the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Pray. Amen. It's going to wrap it up for this week, y'all. By stick them, plug in, get engaged. We're looking to move out and do some things and change the whole landscape.
we got to preach another kind of a gospel out there that's different from what's out there now because it's killing folks. We got to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So become a part of it. Support us on the internet. Support us any way you can. And let's go. Get this over with. It's a dying planet. The only hope they have is somebody to go out there and save those out of it that can be saved. See you back here next week. Have a good week.